We've got some guests on Zoom, I do believe. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as Mashallah. Right, we're glad to just see that you're there. Just want to introduce you. The Hajj is the largest annual religious pilgrimage in the world. While most will arrive by flying or driving, this year, two brothers will be keeping with the tradition and spirit of exerting one's uttermost to reach this noble destination. Two brothers from Edinburgh, Scotland, are Abdul Rahman and Rehan Ali, embarking on the journey on bikes. <laughs> on Monday, the 1st of April, Abdul Rahman and Rahim Ali began their journey from Boinig, Boinig Mosque in um, in Modigain to the Prophet's Mosque in Medina. The journey will take approximately 60 days with over 370, 375 miles, passing through no less than 13 countries to reach Medina in Saudi Arabia on May the 30th. Right now, they are in Sofia, in Bulgaria. Assalamu alaikum, brothers. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you? I'm fine. How are you guys? You've been riding all this time 26 days ago. How do you feel? Alhamdulillah. We're in good spirits. Uh, we're actually doing really well, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Brothers, before we do anything else, we want to show a very quick video so that the viewers can get an idea of what you've been up to. So check out the video, guys. It's been an incredible 20 days on the road of a 60-day journey for the two brothers on their way to Hajj. They have pedaled through the breathtaking landscapes of Scotland, England, Netherlands, Germany, Austria, Slovakia, Hungary, and Serbia, encountering the warmth and generosity of people every step of the way. Their difficult journey in aid for Gaza is far from over. As they continue their pedal-powered pilgrimage towards Mecca, we're reminded of the urgent need to support our brothers and sisters in Gaza. The situation there is dire, with many facing shortages of basic necessities like food, shelter, and medical aid due to constant civilian bombardment. That's why we're calling on all of you to join us in their mission to make a difference. Every pedal stroke they take is fueled by the desire to provide aid and support to those in need. Together, we can help alleviate their suffering and bring hope to their lives. Your contribution will go directly towards supplying vital aid, shelter, food, medical aid, and more to the people of Gaza. And if you've already donated, don't hesitate to share our cause. Every donation, whether it's a pound, euro, dollar, yen, rupee, or dirham, can go a long way. All you have to do is share the cause. Together, let's pedal with purpose and make a positive impact on the lives of those in Gaza. No donation is small. In our millions, let's donate and support whatever we can. Thank you for your support. Mashallah, that was only 20 days into the journey. So brothers, please tell us, how has it been going so far? Alhamdulillah, we are now on day 26 right mm. now. And yeah, like I said, Alhamdulillah, it's been a roller coaster. We would say we've had our ups and downs. We've seen the weather, all weather. We've seen ice cold weather, rain nonstop. We've seen the sunshine, we've seen wind. So, Alhamdulillah, it's just been a case that every day we just take it day by day and we adapt to whatever sure. the condition is. Mm. And yeah, I think as long as we remain, you know, open minded to whatever it is that is to come, Alhamdulillah, we just take it in our stride and we just head down and keep pedaling. Alhamdulillah. Now, on that short video, it did mention the cause uh, why you're doing this as well. But could we hear from yourselves, from yourselves, why are you doing this? What is the cause? Why is it so important at this time? Brothers like yourself and others doing amazing work like this, charity appeals like this as well. Tell us why are you doing this at the moment? Well, we, we were planning on doing this cycle irregardless. Uh, it was a dream of ours to cycle towards times. But with, with the ongoing events unfolding and the severity of the events um, and the sight of not seeing any end to it, it's just, it's, um, it's hard to not do anything. You can't just stand by and watch. It's, it's truly heartbreaking to see. And I'm sure anyone who watches the scenes unfolding, it does, it does bring you to tears. 
Um, so it was decided then that you know we we have to we have to do an appeal, and the appeal has to be for Gaza. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's difficult to watch. You know, we're not even watching two armies go clashing together. We are seeing civilians being bombarded. You know, it's a one-way street. It's not even hand-to-hand combat. Pure, um, it's devastating, and it, you know, it's just not fair. You know, let's leave the civilians out. If you want to go to war, go to war, but leave the civilians out of it. Mm. And, you know, there's not much we can do. We are sitting here helpless, really. Yeah. And if we can make the smallest difference we can to even one life. Alhamdulillah. Well, I, I wouldn't say that you're not doing anything. The both of you are doing a, a fantastic feat. You're very brave for doing it, and it's it's really it's again whatever we can do as individuals to make a difference to appeal to make appeal to do, gather donations. You guys are doing an amazing work. I started before we came on the air by calling you guys legends, and don't think that I'm exaggerating. What you're doing is legendary. So keep going and don't lose hope in yourself, and make sure you continue. One of the things that I've got in my notes here is that the, you encountered the beauty of human. Humanity as you were going through these different cities and towns and villages. Tell us something about, give us the inside, you know, skinny as to how it's been going for you. Did you fall off your bike? Did you get a puncher? Tell us all the nitty gritty, brothers. So, Alhamdulillah, so, so far, up until now, we've, we've, we've experienced, you know, the regular, just the standard basic hiccups, which is your punctures, We've had a couple of spokes that were broken and snapped, <laughs> which they were expected. Um, the build-up coming towards the cycle, I mean, two, three weeks before we secured our package, uh, that's when the nerves really kicked in. And, you know, it's a mix, mixture of emotions. The nerves are kicking in. You're getting anxiety. Are we taking on too big a challenge? Mm. Um, but once we actually started the cycle and, you know, pushed the appeal out, the amount of support that has reached out to us and everyone's the was for us, people reaching out, you know, how in what way can we help? Uh, which countries are you passing by? Are you passing by this country? Maybe you've got family here. Um, yeah, it's just subhanAllah, the humanity that's coming out, people are reaching out from different countries we've, we've never been to. We're meeting people from different faiths, Different, uh, different. Um, what do you call it? Uh, different countries. Uh, their um, ethnicities, or ethnicities, or yeah, their origins and different and cultures. I would imagine. We, of course, you're going through yeah, in Europe. It's a whole totally different culture. And they're culture. just wanting to help us. They just purely wanted to help us. For example, today. Uh, one of the brothers uh, reached out to me, never heard of him in my life, hmm. gave me a message. His, his name's Ahmed, hmm. Bulgarian brother. Oh. He said he will, he can come meet us at 6, 6 p.m. I goes, brother, it's a bit late. Hmm. We want to be but an early start in the morning. He goes, brother, I only want two hours of your time. I want to do your kid book. Hmm. We've, we've got an image on the screen. I hope you can see it. Uh, tell us about this image. What, what are we seeing here? Yeah, so this was a family we, that reached out to us in Amstetten in Austria. And this was a beautiful family. And they took us into their home, their own private space. And it was the mother, father, and the two daughters. And alhamdulillah, they had a beautiful setup. Um, it was a house in the countryside. They had um, everything organic in the back mm. garden, plants growing, chickens. They had a, a goose there to eat up all the slugs. Um, Alhamdulillah, that was beautiful. And they took us in, they cooked us a nice um, stew and fed us well and gave us, you know, our, their hospitality. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. And We've just got... their energy that they were giving us, they were so intrigued in our journey. Um, and just, they were, they were giving us their prayers at the end of it, you know, and they were just wishing us really well. And yeah. this, and and this image as well? Time. Yeah, so this, fam, this brother we met in Passau, Germany, mm. and uh, we, we got there in good time, so we stopped off for a donut kebab, and um, yeah, this brother took us in and again showed us amazing hospitality, was intrigued by, you know, these two brothers wearing the same tops, mm. uh, you know, we seen our bikes loaded with luggage and seeing, asking us what we're doing, 
um, we told them what we were doing, and as soon as as soon as he heard, it was mm. a family-run business. So news started going around in the restaurant to all these other family members, and they're all coming out to greet us. And yeah, um, wow. yeah, shout out to Patel Dunar. That's the name of the kebab shop. You know, I was wondering, how do you train for something like this? Because you're talking about a massive distance. How, if somebody wanted to do something like what you're doing right now, maybe you inspire somebody and they're thinking, you know what, I want to do something like that. How do you go about training for something like this? So it's difficult because at the end of the day, we both work full time. Uh, I've got a family, I've got my wife, two kids uh, to provide for it as well. So trying to keep keep the training consistent is... Uh, a difficult task but um one of one of the methods i used it was difficult for me to get out on the bike and put the hours on the saddle was just doing it indoors on the exercise bike i'd try and do maybe three to four sessions a week and even that was difficult it would sometimes only be one time a week but um yeah uh on the exercise bike i would just set the resistance to really high because i only i could only yeah. do like one hour at a time yeah um, and then, yeah, I would I would put the time in in that way, and I'll try and get outdoors once a week, um, just just to get the legs conditioned. Yeah. So I humbly that has worked, um, <laughs> and obviously everyone's doing and making this, you know, that that bit easier for us. Right. And you can't on that topic power, of duas and interaction, how do how do we support you guys? Is there a web page or Instagram? How do people follow you if they want to support you? Financially, dua-wise, whatever the case yeah. may be. So we have an Instagram page, which is where we post mostly Instagram, and then Facebook gets all posts and other platforms. But Instagram's the main one. And then on the Instagram bio, we have links for the charity uh, where they can donate for the cause. And uh, I think there's a LinkedIn page there on there as well. Is it LinkedIn? No, it's not basically LinkedIn. Basically, there's a link uh, tree. Link tree for all the other social platforms. Oh, yes. And also, there's a link there for my Strava account so you can follow our journeys are logged each day onto the Strava account. Yeah. So all the donation page is on that link tree on the Instagram account, which is Pedal to Hajj. Pedal to yeah. Hajj. Um, yes. And you can follow our journey. We put our stories daily on where we are, how our journey is going on the day. Uh, so you, you can follow us up, our story on the day mm -hmm. as we're going on the journey. Okay. So you're in Bulgaria now. When do you set off? Uh, when do you continue your journey? So tomorrow we set off and we head to Plovdiv in Bulgaria. That will be another 100 miles. Oof. And then from there we head to Harmani, that is southern Bulgaria. And then on Mondays we cross over the border into Turkey, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Guys, we want to thank you so much and wish you all the best on this amazing feat, guys. Stay safe. And when you do get to Mecca, make sure you let us know, inshallah. We'll try and hook, up, hook you up again for another talk, inshallah. So it'll be fantastic. Thank you, guys. Take care. Salam alaikum. Wow. I wish I had the guts to do something like that. I'm just too lazy. I am. I'm very lazy. Right, guys, we're going to go for a quick break.